Today's video takes us back to December 5, 1945, when what seemed like a standard training mission turned into a historical mystery. At 2.10 p.m., from a naval air station in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, five TBM Avenger torpedo bombers, known as Flight 19, embarked on a three-hour training called Navigation Problem No. 1. Their mission was to follow a triangular route, starting east from the Florida coast towards Hens and Chicken Shoals for bombing exercises. Next, they'd turn north flying over Grand Bahama Island, then make a third turn to head southwest, aiming to return to their base. Apart from one aircraft, which had a two-man crew, each Avenger held three Navy or Marine personnel, most with around 300 flying hours. Leading them was Lieutenant Charles C. Taylor, a seasoned pilot with a rich history of combat missions in the Pacific Theater during World War II. Initially, Flight 19's mission was going as planned, similar to the 18 flights earlier that day. Around 2.30 p.m., Taylor and his crew successfully completed a practice bombing run at Hens and Chickens Shoals. However, soon after they redirected north for the next part of their flight, unexpected confusion arose. Taylor mistakenly believed that the compass in his Avenger was faulty, leading him to think they were off course. The situation deteriorated when a weather front brought rain, strong winds and thick clouds, causing severe disorientation for Flight 19. One pilot communicated via radio, expressing their lost state, I don't know where we are. We must have got lost after that last turn. Lieutenant Robert F. Cox, a Navy flight instructor flying near the Florida coast, was the first to intercept the patrol's radio messages. He quickly notified the air station about the unfolding events and reached out to the Avengers to offer help. Taylor, sounding worried, responded, Both my compasses are out and I'm trying to find Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm over land, but it's broken. I'm sure I'm in the Keys, but I don't know how far down. Taylor's assertion seemed perplexing, given that he had flown over the hens and chicken shoals in the Bahamas less than an hour before. Despite this, he was convinced that his planes had veered hundreds of miles off course to the Florida Keys. At 27 years old, and recently transferred to Fort Lauderdale from Miami, it has been speculated by many that Taylor might have confused the Bahamian Islands for the Keys, leading to the navigational confusion. In standard protocol, pilots who find themselves lost in the Atlantic are advised to align their aircraft with the setting sun and head west towards the mainland for orientation. However, in this instance, Taylor was under the impression that he and his squadron were over the Gulf of Mexico, not the Atlantic. This misperception led him to the critical and ill-fated decision to navigate Flight 19 in a northeast direction, believing it would bring them to the Florida Peninsula. Contrary to his intentions, this decision would lead them further away from land and deeper into the sea. Some members of his flight group seemed to realize the error in Taylor's judgment. There was evident frustration among the pilots, as evidenced by their radio communications. One of the pilots voiced his concern emphatically over the radio, expressing a clear sense of urgency and frustration by saying, Damn it, if we would just fly west, we would get home. This statement reflects the growing realization within the group that their intended course of action was misdirected and that a simpler solution was being overlooked. Taylor was eventually convinced to reverse course and head west, but this decision was short-lived. After 6 p.m., he changed his mind, expressing doubts that they had not traveled far enough east, fearing they were still over the Gulf of Mexico. We didn't go far enough east, he stated, suggesting a return to an easterly course. We may as well just turn around and go east again. This decision likely faced opposition from his pilots. Some investigators speculate that one aircraft may have even separated from the group to head in a different direction. However, the majority seemed to adhere to Taylor's commands. As time passed, Flight 19's radio signals grew weaker as they continued into the open sea. The situation grew more dire as the plane's fuel reserves dwindled. Taylor was overheard preparing his crew for an emergency water landing. He instructed, all planes close up tight. We'll have to ditch unless landfall. When the first plane drops below 10 gallons, we all go down together. Not long after, the transmissions from the Avengers ceased, leaving only a haunting static noise as the last sign of their presence. 
Immediately following the disappearance of Flight 19, the Navy launched a search operation, dispatching a duo of PBM Mariner flying boats from a naval air station near Fett Lauderdale at around 7.30 p.m. Tragically, merely 20 minutes into the search, one of the Mariners also disappeared from radar, echoing the mysterious fate of Flight 19. The wreckage of this Mariner and the 13 crew members aboard were never found, leading to widespread belief that the aircraft exploded shortly after takeoff, known for their vulnerability to accidents and nicknamed flying gas tanks due to their tendency to ignite, these flying boats had a fraught reputation. This theory of a catastrophic explosion was further supported when a nearby merchant ship witnessed a fireball in the sky and subsequently discovered an oil slick on the water's surface indicating the probable location of the disaster. As dawn broke the following day, the Navy mobilized an extensive search operation deploying over 300 boats and aircraft to find Flight 19 and the Lost Mariner. This massive effort scoured an area exceeding 300,000 square miles for five days, yet it yielded no results. Navy Lieutenant David White later reflected on the operation, noting the complete absence of any findings. They just vanished. We had hundreds of planes out looking, and we searched over land and water for days and nobody ever found the bodies or any debris. The subsequent Navy investigation was equally perplexed by the circumstances, while there was speculation that Taylor might have mistaken the Bahamas for the Florida Keys following a compass failure, the board could not definitively explain the severe disorientation experienced by Flight 19. Ultimately, the official conclusion cited the cause of the disappearance as causes or reasons unknown, leaving the mystery of Flight 19 unsolved. The mysterious events of December 5, 1945 have sparked a wide array of sensational theories and conjectures. During the 1960s and 70s, pulp magazines and authors like Vincent Gaddis and Charles Berlitz popularized the notion that Flight 19 was consumed by the Bermuda Triangle, an area in the Atlantic notorious for its numerous unexplained disappearances and mechanical malfunctions. Subsequent literary and cinematic works have floated ideas about magnetic anomalies, alternate dimensions, and extraterrestrial kidnappings contributing to the incident. Notably, the 1977 movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind portrayed Flight 19 as being abducted by UFOs, only to be later found in the Mexican desert, further embedding the event in popular culture and mystery lore. While it might not be a case of supernatural phenomena, the disappearance of the Lost Patrol is certainly shrouded in peculiarities and lingering queries. Among the most baffling aspects is related to Lieutenant Taylor. Reports from witnesses indicated that he was tardy for Flight 19's pre-flight briefing and even asked to be relieved of his command for the mission, stating, I just don't want to take this one out. The reasons behind Taylor's reluctance are unclear sparking speculation that he might have been unfit for duty at the time. This incident adds another layer of intrigue to the already mysterious story of Flight 19's disappearance. Another baffling detail is the failure of Flight 19's members to utilize the rescue radio frequency or their aircraft's ZBX receivers, which could have guided them to Navy radio towers on land. Despite being instructed to activate these devices, there is no indication that the pilots either heard or heeded this advice. The fate of Flight 19 remains largely speculative, with the most plausible theory being that the planes exhausted their fuel and were forced to land in the Atlantic, off the Florida coast. This would have left any survivors to contend with the challenges of rough seas and deep waters. In 1991, a discovery by treasure hunters of five World War II-era Avengers near Fort Lauderdale momentarily suggested a resolution to the Flight 19 Enigma, but it was later determined that these aircraft were from a different Navy squadron, as their serial numbers did not match those of the infamous Lost Patrol. The possibility that the remains of Flight 19 and the ill-fated rescue plane are concealed within the Bermuda Triangle persists in public imagination. Despite ongoing searches, no concrete evidence of the six planes or their 27 crew members has been found, continuing the legacy of mystery surrounding their disappearance.